Well, welcome to another edition of 5 Minutes on K-12 Online Learning with, and today the with is with Rachel Whaley, who is uh, the principal of the Virtual Learning Network in New Zealand. So welcome, Rachel. Kia ora, Michael. Um, yeah, I'm the um, primary e-principal, so I work with the primary schools in New Zealand for online learning. Okay. Um, I guess to, to build upon that, can you tell us a little bit more about your background in online learning? Okay, so um, we've been working with on um, schools in New Zealand for over a decade in the primary sector. That's a um, to year year eight, twelve year olds, and um, been working with schools. So it's a collaboration of schools working together to provide online learning opportunities. So we're working through the public schooling system. And um, previous to that, I worked with Taranaki Secondary Schools. That's Tabanaki in the background, and um, so I've worked across. A range of schools. I mean, on, online learning or virtual and distance learning has been happening in New Zealand for quite a long time. Cool. So over that time, you've worked with a lot of teachers that you've inducted and, and, and introduced into this environment. And we've got a whole heap of them now all around the world that are being thrown into this with short notice and, and without much background or preparation. So if you were to give them a, a couple of pieces of advice on how to go about managing the, the current situation, what would you say to them? Well, I guess the first thing is that online learning is so different from classroom learning and you just can't aim to replicate what you're doing in a classroom. Um, but what you what you can do is to um, make sure you've got some key learning objectives about what you want to achieve with your students, being aware that, you know, these are these are strange and difficult times and that perhaps the first focus should be around ensuring the well-being of your learners and, connect, and making sure you're connecting with them and maintaining those positive relationships transitioning from classroom to online learning. And so the connections and the social interactions are firstly the important thing. And, um, and then not to sort of give them too much work to do, really. Um, focus on some key learning objectives uh, what are what are some priority areas that we want to maintain some continuity in um, in the time that they're not in school but they're online with you? So my biggest thing I think is to have a plan. So plan your um, plan your learning program, plan your progressions, um, plan for variety and activity so they're not in front of the screen all the time, you're setting things up and they're going away and doing some practical things. I think that's really important. And um, instead of just sort of looking out on the internet, I think that's what a lot of teachers are doing, like, oh, we're online, what can I use? And they're just grabbing all sorts of things from the internet and make, creating busy stuff to keep kids occupied during the day. So I think then is sort of back up the bus on that a little bit and think about, again, what are their key learning outcomes and how they can create some um, online learning that fits that rather than going out and grabbing a whole bunch of resources and saying, let's do this today. Um, so planning and continuity, I think, is, is important. And for teachers, I know it's so overwhelming. Their inboxes are just full of stuff from ed tech companies and um providers saying, oh, we can do this and you can have free that and um, all the rest of it, but and choose what you may already be using in school. Um, if you're not um, using online tools, start with um, a couple of things and get to know them well, and rather than, a, um, you know, don't go crazy on every sort of tool that you can use. Um, pick a couple of things and stick to them. And if you've got a school-wide plan, that's a really good idea. So you've got some consistency. So families, um, we know with a number of children aren't using five different platforms. They're all working off the same school-wide platform. And um, I'd say the other thing is, is reach out and collaborate with your colleagues. Um, reach out and just have a chat. Um, make sure that you, you've, you've got a messaging system, whether it's um, your Zoom chat channels, WhatsApp, whatever works for you in your school and with your colleagues. Just keeping in touch is really important and feel like that you don't have to reinvent the wheel that together, say, if you're in a secondary school, you can um, work in subject areas and create that work together. And I think particularly at this time, it's a really good idea to do a lot of team teaching 
Um, you never know um, who might be sick next and who's going to look after your kids if you're not there. So team teaching and, um, and collaboration is a really good way to build some resilience into your schooling network. Okay. Similarly, <laughs> sorry, I was going to say similarly, we've got um, a, a bunch of parents now that have children at home and, and they've got to play an even greater role in, in the schooling equation than what they would traditionally play when the kids go off to school. Um, and many of them are looking for guidance as well. So based upon, uh, I know there's a smaller number of, of homeschooler students that are involved with the, the VLN primary than those that are traditionally in school, but um, based upon those kids, have you picked up any tips that you could give parents who find themselves in this situation now? Uh, I think um, there's a balance between sort of like school at home and home school uh, that um, don't worry that you have to do this all by yourself because your teachers, the school children's teachers are actually preparing them some work as well too. Um, so it's a balance between some, some structured work that's coming from your teachers and, and the things that you want to do together as a family because you've got this time together so it'd be great to um, make the most of that time but know that your teachers as I've talked about are looking for some continuity in the learning outcomes that they're working on at school and so to communicate and just keep those communication channels open with the teachers ask some questions ask to be invited as parents to their online classes help your kids um, keep track of their learning um, and advocate for them if they're having if they if they get stuck on things you're not sure how it works just you know help them communicate with their teachers to get some um, extra support in particular areas that they might feel. Um, having said that, about all the ways you can support your children in their learning, which is really important when you're online learning, this online support support for online learners is most important. But then there's the other side of the equation as well too. You know. Don't be breathing down their neck every five minutes. Don't be jumping into their online class every five minutes. They, they might need a bit of space as well too, and they might want, you know, enabling them to have um, opportunities to be independent learners with you out of the way is also helpful. So I think it's striking that balance um, between giving them space and giving them support. So um, just be just be aware of that as well too, and just maintaining those positive relationships and keeping in touch with their teachers who will be reaching out to you as well too. So even if there's just um, things coming from their teachers, it's really good for their teachers to know that you get it, that you're receiving it, that you're on board. Just send the teachers some messages as well too so that you're sort of closing that, that circle, circle of learning support um, around our kids. So that's uh, main, the main advice I'd, I'd give to parents. And I guess... It's, we've been in lockdown for, this is our day two now, and it just feels, I mean, it's quiet. It, it just feels like everything's slowing down a little bit. So take the time to enjoy being at home with your with your children for the time that we have them at home. All right, perfect. Well, thank you very much, Rachel. This has been another edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning, and today we've been with Rachel Whaley.